So I have uh, today a, uh, an encouragement for those of you who are studying your Bible rightly divided to Timothy 2.15 and that you understand that there are different dispensations and this solves all the problems of contradictions, by the way, in the Bible. There are different dispensations and we need to understand which dispensation we are in. And uh, maybe kind of a contentious one would be uh, one that I can't, kind of came across while studying 1 Corinthians 11. And 1 Corinthians 11 starts out with, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You think, oh, well, you know, I'll follow Christ. But do we follow Christ or do we follow Paul? He goes on to say, I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding to the teachings just as I passed them to you. And he goes on to talk about that Christ is the head of the man and, and uh, etc. And, and goes on into talking about uh, veils and, and coverings. But I'd like to start, uh, you know, stay with this, this, this first part here because do you follow Christ... We follow Christ. Christ is our head. But do you follow what Christ said while he was on earth and the kingdom was nigh? Yeah, uh, it, is no, it is no longer. Or do you follow Paul? Well, I'd like to just give you four little contrasts here between following Jesus, let's say Jesus, and following Paul. If we go to Matthew 28, 20, and we see here, uh, uh, he, he's teaching, Jesus is teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. So it seems like, well, if we love Jesus, if we love Christ, we will keep his uh, commands. But here's Paul saying, well, you know, I'm bringing you something different. And Paul is the, uh, is the apostle to the Gentiles, and he, you know, he kind of duked it out with Peter, and they had to have private meetings. And so, you know, if you're paying attention at all, there is a real substantial difference between what Peter and James and John are bringing and what Paul is, is uh, bringing. So, for example, let's go with offerings. Yeah, so you might have given uh, in church, or you may have given online, but the, in uh, Matthew 5, Jesus says, Therefore, if you are offering a gift on the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them and then come back and offer your gift. Well, you know, have you ever seen a priest or a preacher say, All right, look, before you... <laughs> Before you contribute to this church online, make sure that there's no brother or sister that you know uh, you, you've, you, has got something against you. Um, <clears throat> I have some people that have things against me, and they will never <laughs> reconcile, <laughs> or at least it doesn't feel like they ever will. Now you say, Peter, you, sh you should probably try, and, and you would be right. But I can't contribute to the church before that happens? Well, that, but that's what following Jesus in the time that the kingdom was rolling up, it didn't get there because it was re Jesus was rejected, this is what he says. Are you going to obey his commands or are you not going to obey his commands? And we see today, well, actually, we don't obey his commands. But why don't you? You shouldn't. But why don't you obey his commands? Well, it's because it's a different dispensation. Let's have another example here about savings. You know, save had the what's the big thing, pensions and retirement and all that kind of thing. No, 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 no. If you're following Jesus, you shouldn't save. Don't lay up riches on earth, he says in Matthew 16, 9. Sell everything you have and follow me. This is the, the story of the young rich ruler in Matthew 19. Also, uh, Matthew 19, it is difficult for the rich to get into the kingdom of heaven. There you are, okay? Um, the Apostolic Assembly did this. Uh, in Acts 2, if you read, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. 
They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Okay, but <laughs> do you see that? Any? I mean, there are some kooky uh, uh, groups of people out there that try to do this kind of thing, but you'll just starve, okay? And, and as noble as it may sound, and as, and, and, and as good an idea it, as it is to share what you have with those in need, this is a, this is a command, and, and we're not doing it. But, you know, under Paul, we know that we are saved by faith plus nothing okay and that's re that's really really good news we're saved by faith plus nothing in, in acts 2 38 they say repent and be baptized that's at that time how you were saved you had to repent and be baptized well repentance and baptism are works but paul says it's faith plus nothing you can see Sometimes very subtle differences, sometimes things that, you know, you might not want to exclude. We may not want to exclude water baptism today because it's an inward sign, an outward sign of an inward grace. That's fine. But to think that's what saves you is completely wrong and, and at odds with what Scripture teaches us. Okay, just a couple, just a couple more. Uh, prayer. <laughs> well, I've covered this one before. Um, ask and you shall receive. Knock, search, and you will find. This is in Matthew 7. And I pray. I think you probably pray. And do you get what you want? And you think, well, yeah, I kind of did, you know. And, and part of it is aligning myself with the will of God, aligning myself with Scripture. And and so, yeah, and, but but. That is not what they are saying here in uh, the Gospels. That's not what Jesus is saying here. That's not what's happening with the apostles. You know, they are asked, they are doing great miracles right in front of people all the time. People are being healed, raised from the dead, and you do not see that today. John 15, 7. Uh, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done to you. Now, you can pull that apart and go all the way down to the bottom of the Greek, the original Greek, um, or maybe say, no, no, it was said in Aramaic and translated to go down to the bottom of the original Aramaic. That's pretty simple stuff. Ask what you wish, and it will be done for you. But that doesn't happen. And when your children pray and say, you know, God, bring me a, a, you know, a, a, a toy car or something, that doesn't just happen. James 4, 3, when you ask, you do not receive. Yeah, but that's, I, I, I experienced that quite a lot. Why not? Because you ask with the wrong motives. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> if the kingdom's on offer and the kingdom's coming up, you've got to have the right motives. Right. And I think we do need to have the right motives. But when I do have the right motives, let's say that's 50% of the time, I'm still not just getting what I want. Of course, when I pray, I don't, I don't really pray for, you know, give me this and give me that and, and, and you know, make sure that it rains and that, and that kind of thing. Um, but, but the point is, in that dispensation, you would pray for what you wanted and you would receive it. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And of course, this is the basis for a lot of the prosperity gospel. Nonsense. It's just evil nonsense that has corrupted uh, the church. Rather, if we're following Paul, you go to Colossians 4.2 and you see, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and then you'll get everything you... No, oh, no, that no, it just stops there. Be watchful and thankful. Be thankful for what you've got. Philippians 4.6, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It doesn't say you have to filter the requests. 
but you know, present these requests to God and there's no promise. You will grow in faith and knowledge is what uh, Paul in his prayer say. I hope you grow in your faith and knowledge and not that you get all the stuff that you asked for. Ephesians 4, 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Well, oh, very good. And you will get every no, no, and you will get all your heart's desires. No. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul said, or uh, uh, God's, God is saying to Paul, who is keeps praying uh, for, for healing, he says, My grace is sufficient. And that's where we are today. We're under grace. You are not struck down with leprosy if you do something bad. But you're also not cured from leprosy if you just happen to get it uh, by, by, by God in, in, this, in this age of grace. And the final one here, dinners. Luke 14, 22, when Jesus said to his host, uh, Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends. Do not invite your brothers, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If, they, if you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Ah, okay, so no more church barbecues. <laughs> what does this mean? You mean we can't, we can't invite our friends and have a nice meal and then they reciprocate? Isn't this kind of... Nice, but, but here, you know, they're looking for repayment at the resurrection. And Paul does talk about this too. There, there's, there's subtle but real differences between these things. We are made unto good works. We need to run the race. And may, part of running the race may be uh, helping to feed the poor and that kind of thing. But it's not the same as saying, don't invite your friends over. Don't invite the rich people over. Uh, you know, have, give your banquets to the crippled and to the lame. And of course, this wasn't going to be forever when Jesus was saying it. He, he, was, he was waiting for the kingdom to come in. This was going to change the world. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, the Jews rejected him in the end. And we have this now this, this opened up period of grace. At some point, Christ will come back. Uh, the, 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 the clock, the prophetic clock, will start ticking again, uh, but, but not for us. For now, we follow Paul, who follows Christ, and Christ is our head. He is the head of every man. Matthew 28, 19, we were told, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. That was what they were doing when the kingdom was still on offer. That's uh, Acts 2. We don't do that. It was Israel's role to be a light unto the world and to, and to uh, go out. Paul says, follow me. As I follow Christ. That's 1 Corinthians uh, 11. Jesus was preaching at a time when the, the kingdom was near. It was rolling up on us, and now it is not. Paul has the hitherto for uh, uh, unrevealed revelation of the mystery that just wasn't out there and and it and and it was not part of scripture and it was not part of prophecy it is special to paul his head is christ uh, but we follow paul and if you don't follow paul and if you don't follow the pauline epistles especially colossians ephesians Philippians, First uh, and Second Timothy, uh, th those are very directly to us. But you know, uh, let's take along Romans, even though that was written to a, a, a Jewish group and, and the kingdom was uh, still on offer. But it still got the Pauline message to uh, to the na nations, to the to the Gentiles. Those are the things you need to be fine. And if you if you do that, 
if you divide it up like that, if you follow right division, you see that the stuff in the Gospels, it's to Jews. It's to Jews who are about to inherit a kingdom and that they will roll that out and be a light unto the rest of the world and then, you know, the, the Gentiles will benefit. What was not foreseen was that there would be this direct approach to the Gentiles, yeah? that, that, that salvation goes unto the Gentiles, Acts 28.28. 28. And this is, this is probably one of the most important dividing lines within Scripture is, is Acts 28. Until then, it's to the Jews, to the Jews first, to the Jews, and then it's, no, um, you are in abeyance. We're, I'm going to set you aside. You are low ami. You are not my people. And this solves a lot of uh, issues with, with contradictions in the Bible. While well, over here it says that, you know, you pray for what you want and you get it, you know, and, and, but you pray and I, nothing happened. You prayed for, you know, lightning to strike me in the head. Nothing happened. Well, you know, of course it didn't. And that's very biblical if you understand Scripture rightly divided. Well, thank you so much. I would love to hear any feedback you have about this or uh, any, any other takes you have on Scripture. And, uh, well, until the next time, God bless.